Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rod Squad Afternoon Edition of October 22nd, 2020. In this video, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, during her press briefing that began at 10.45 a.m. EST, just stated, I think we're about there in terms of making a deal with the administration for a disaster relief package that they could put into a bill that can ultimately pass by election day, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi began her press briefing by stating she is hopeful that the administration and Democrats can ultimately cut a deal and put it into a bill that can be passed prior to election day and slapped on the president's desk so he can sign it into law and disperse much needed funds to the American people. He stated that she has finally compromised with the administration for a plan to ultimately crush the virus, crush the virus, crush the virus, a national strategic plan for tracing, testing, containment, separation, ventilation, etc. She stated that we are almost there. In other words, they are pretty close to making a deal. She has also stated that they've put pen to paper in terms of writing the easiest parts of the legislation. So they are in the technical phase as White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows stated yesterday where committee chairs are working with the administration and Democrats to put whatever deal that the Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi ultimately seal into legislative language. However, she did concede that it is going to be a long process, that she's a legislator, and I guess the rest of her colleagues over on Capitol Hill are legislators and they understand how long it takes in order to draft and cut a release and cut a bill and excuse me and pass a bill so it has to go through the CBO uh, legislative council has to also weigh in on it and a number of steps that the bill has to go to to ultimately put it on the floor vote on it pass it into law and slap it under the president's desk so we can sign it to law and disperse much needed funds to the American people and businesses reeling from the pandemic. He stated that right now, the administration and Democrats still do not have agreement on state and local governments. She stated that it's needed for the kids because kids have to ensure that they can attend a school that is the safest place for them to learn. She wants kids learning. She wants parents earning. And in order to ensure that safety, all it takes is money. And part of the money has to come from state and local governments. She stated that state and local governments fund 90% of the money required to operate public schools. Therefore, if you say no to state and local governments, you are saying no to providing help to children. If you are allowing for $150 billion in tax breaks for the rich, then you are saying no to children. If you are saying to other provisions such as, such as money for food and child care and money for child tax credits and other credits that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi listed during her press briefing, then you are also saying no to children. Then about 1051, I heard that something dropped from her whole facial arrangement. I was like, wow, did she drop a tooth? So she stated that right now, as she stated yesterday, state and local government or funding for state and local governments is outstanding, as you very well know. The administration wants $300 billion dollars for state and local governments, while House Democrats are demanding $436 billion for state and local governments. Then, when reporters started asking her questions, well, even before they started asking her questions, first she also started to cite that, as she stated in her letter to her Democratic colleagues, she stated there has to be respect for communities of color. She stated that black kids are five times more likely than white kids to be hospitalized due to the virus, and Latino children, Hispanic children, are eight times more likely to be hospitalized by, by the virus. Therefore, there has to be funding that addresses the disproportional effects of the pandemic on communities of color. Then, reporters started asking her questions. And among those questions were, why, how can she be so optimistic when there are a number of Senate Republicans that are stating that they want zero as White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows stated yesterday they don't want to support any further disaster relief funding and anything that the administration and House Democrats may ultimately cut into a deal may not even be seen or considered on the Senate floor and there's no way that it can be passed and ultimately signed into law to be dispersed to the American people and businesses reeling from the pandemic. She stated that as she told, as she tells Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, if either negotiator did not think that there was a purpose in those talks, that she wouldn't even be holding those talks, that right now, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has his members in disarray. President Donald Trump is also in disarray because he's all over the map. 
One day he's stating, and a reporter also stated that he said he the because she also stated that President Donald Trump is eager to want a deal. As she stated yesterday on Joe Madison's show on Sirius XM radio, she stated that President Donald Trump is the one that needs the legislation most. Therefore, that is her leverage. He's the one that's so eager to get those checks out with his name on it in people's pockets. However, he does not care for the rest. So he wants to she wants to ensure that a bill gets passed that does not make matters worse. That the administration wants to work towards something if it's emaciated or skinny that at $500 billion or whatever type of number they're trying to offer her, it's something that may make matters worse, taking one step forward and two steps back. And she stated that she has to pass the right bill. She wants to pass the right bill. So therefore, she stated again, as she said yesterday, that it's up to President Donald Trump to cajole Senate Republicans and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to ensure that they get, they get, they get the desperately needed help to the American people by ensuring that they put any bill that comes out of the negotiations with the administration and House Democrats on the Senate floor up for a vote so when we get passed and signed into law so the much needed, dis, much needed funds to the American people and businesses get dispersed as promptly as possible. That said, she stated if she has to, she has to also stated yesterday and today she suggested that if somehow negotiations for the next disaster relief package, they don't come to fruition and they have to pass something after election day, she's also open to working towards that. A reporter also stated, citing GOP whip Senator John Thune, representing the state of South Dakota's comments, stating that he can't get 13 votes in order to pass a comprehensive bill that the administration and House Democrats may pass for the 13 required votes so they can push the bill over the threshold until they pass it to slap it on the president's desk so he can sign into law and disperse much needed funds to the American people. She stated that she is not with the idea of simply getting 13 votes in the Senate. She wants something with broad bipartisan support. Therefore, that's why she is working with the administration and she is putting it on the administration to ensure that they get full bipartisan support for a package to which both parties ultimately agree for the next disaster relief package. So again, it gets bipartisan support on both sides. And then she basically closed her press briefing today. Florida Senator Marco Rubio stated that he would be willing to vote and support a comprehensive package that costs higher than he wants as long as it helps the American people. He states that the cost of not doing anything will be higher if Congress does not do anything. He states that certain there'll be certain structural damages to components of the economy that will be hard to prepare if they do nothing. And again, if he wants to, if he votes, excuse me, if he sees a comprehensive bill that has a top line number that's higher than what he wants, he is comfortable with voting on it as long as it meets the needs of the American people. That said, he also stated that he was working with his committee, the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. He's the chairman of that committee and he was talking to them. So I am sure as Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had tasked all committees in both the lower chamber and upper chamber of Congress to start to work on the legislative language that into which the deal that they ultimately make will be transformed or will be drafted, then I'm pretty sure they were talking about, they were discussing things like the, like more money for the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grants. As you very well know, the updated HEROES Act is calling for another round of Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grants. The bill is calling for 40, board, 40, excuse me, $40 billion more. The U.S. Senate uh, the Small Business uh, Committee, the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship is also tasked with working and considering S.4227 with mandates, mandates that the Small Business Administration disperses the full $10,000 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant to all legitimate small business applicants. Therefore, as I told you in today's video, go ahead and contact them at sbc.senate.gov and let them know that you want your grant and the updated HEROES Act is also proposing $40 billion for either a $50,000 grant or six months of working capital minus cost of goods sold 
for businesses with less than 50 employees owned by veterans, owned by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, businesses in low income areas, and businesses and recreational businesses that have suffered revenue losses due to the emergency closure of the Canadian and US border. And if you could show a 30% or greater revenue loss for an eight week period between March 2nd and December 31st, when comparable, to another eight week period prior to March 2nd, 2020 or in 2019, then you will be eligible for this grant. So let them know that you want those much needed funds in order to save your businesses, keep your employees on payroll so they can save and feed their families. And if you wanna go ahead and contact the committee chairs of the rest of Congress and go ahead and find them, on usa.gov slash elected dash officials. You can find your elected officials there and see what committees on which they serve. So you can demand another round of stimulus checks, enhanced unemployment insurance payments at $600 or whatever amount you deem fit. So you can save and feed your families, save your businesses, keep your employees on payroll to ultimately save this country. Let me know what you think. Drop your comments and feelings in the comment section below. Watch this video right here. For more economic injury, disaster loan, and stimulus coverage, click the like button if you like the video. Click the subscribe button and click the bell notification to stay on top of my findings when I upload them. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America and everybody else on this planet. Talk soon.